Cooper Standard continues to climb on above average daily volume. Uh, since we put it out publicly in May of 2022 and on Fox Business with Liz Clayman on June 7th, 2022, it's up 3x or about 200% as of yesterday. We believe the move is just getting started. There's the original clip. Here's some information from our original thesis. Uh, number one in uh, ceiling systems, number two in fuel and brake delivery systems, and number three in fluid transfer systems. All the companies they have, plus uh, Tesla, which they can't publish their uh, trademark. Um, EVs, they get uh, higher cost per vehicle and more parts. And this is the revenues they achieved when we were at peak production in 2017 was $3.6 billion. 456 million of EBITDA. They earned over $7 a share. They got a 20 times multiple and yet a $146 stock. We think that um, global production levels will reach, even if they reached 85 or 90% now with the increased margins and the cost they've taken out of the business, they can get to $7 a share. And then the question is, does it get a 10 multiple or a 20 multiple or somewhere in between? And that's our thesis for having a much higher stock. <clears throat> now, uh, you can read through all of this to, to get to the math of $7 a share and how we get there, um, which we've gone through in the past. Now, what's new and why is the stock going up again without any new earnings uh, calls, without any new guidance, etc.? On June 14th, they published an investor presentation on their website. If you just go to investor relations, the stock has been moving up aggressively since then on well above average daily volume. Yesterday, for instance, it traded 373 shares compared to its average daily volume of 144,000, and it was up 6.49%. So the elephants are coming into the stock. Um, and why are they coming in? So what's the new information? First and foremost, a reiteration, they're laser, laser focused on return on invested capital and getting back to double digit return on invested capital. Strong revenue growth outlook, uh, increasing global light vehicle production, and higher content per vehicle. This is the big deal, the higher content per vehicle, which is not in our core thesis. <clears throat> the EVs we always saw as just a kicker. So w our model is predicated on the idea that margins are what they were in 2017, uh, and general production starts to trend up towards those levels, and they've taken a lot of costs out. What's not in our model is that the cost per vehicle is going up, their margins are going up, and they've taken a lot out of the business. So while we think $7 a share is reasonable, this thing maybe could earn $10 a share if everything goes right, uh, and then you're looking at an even much higher stock. So uh, it remains to be seen, but um, we're pretty optimistic. The value add innovation, higher cost per vehicle, expanded total addressable market, and finally imminent profit margin inflection, improved fixed cost structure, increased production volumes, and enhanced commercial agreements. So the EV market shift is creating new opportunities for them, greater need for optimized fluid handling architects, architectures. So um, that's a big deal. Demand for differentiated ceiling solutions and enhanced aesthetics. Increased demand for lightweight solutions because of the battery. Helping customers increase vehicle range and generating opportunities for additional cost per vehicle. This is exciting. This is something that was not in our original thesis, which could be an additional kicker and whipped cream on top of what we think is going to be a fantastic uh, appreciation. As you can see, they get 20% more for EVs and the push is on globally to push towards EVs. Uh, revolutionary integrated fluid system increasing value. This fluid system, this is huge up to 60% incremental cost per vehicle growth opportunity just in this one division of their business. That is like game changing. Um, they've also used new digital tools to bring costs down. They brought down their engineering expense to sales by 109 basis points. They brought their manufacturing fixed cost to sales down 322 basis points. That's monstrous. They took out a cumulative sustainable cost saving impact to adjusted EBITDA in the last three years of $479 million. And at the same time, guess what's happening? North America light vehicle production is going up. And I think is very conservative, the estimates here. Improving profitability and mitigating risk with enhanced commercial agreements. 
Index-based agreements limiting exposure. That was a big problem for them with the inflation. Now they've got that ironed out. Um, uh, improved payment terms. They they would have to put up, I think they had like 85 or $100 million of tooling out there. And now they've got improved payment terms so they don't have to have all that money tied up. And then finally is focused on profitable business, fix or exit uh, underperforming at products or regions. So they're negotiating with the OEMs to uh, get more profitable pricing in Europe, which uh, it was implied from the last earnings call that they're making good progress on that front, which would be a big boon that's not in the model. So the cost savings were huge uh, since 2018, which means when the operating leverage kicks in, the margins are going to be much higher than we're, we have in our model. Plan revenue growth outpacing ex, uh, expected increases in market production. So as the market grows, 3% a year top line CAGR. Uh, Cooper Standard will grow 8% uh, per year CAGR, which doesn't sound like a lot, but I'm going to give you the math in just a second. They now have pricing discipline, and they've got inflation recovery and sustainable price adjustments negotiated in the last year on current production business. Now, the last slide is the most important. While they have low estimated market growth, they ha also have those are just industry estimates. They have conservative revenue growth for the company at 8% uh, CAGR. Now, an 8% CAGR implies $3.15 billion of top line revenue in 2025 and $3.4 billion in 2026. This puts us right in line for original thesis from last year of $3.3 billion of revenues would lead to $412 million of adjusted EBITDA, $123 million of net income. Uh, or $7.19 a share in EPS at a 10 times multiple, that's a $72 stock. At the peak multiple, that would be $140, $46 stock. And if you want to be conservative, cut both in half and you're still at a 5 to 10 bagger. So keep in mind, our original thesis is predicated on 2017 margins. As you can see, they've taken out meaningful costs in the last few years and increased pricing, which means our bottom line targets could be exceeded or reached earlier than expected.